I had done some research, I think it was last week, when uh, the Supreme Court, they gave the blessing, they gave their blessing to Obamacare, and uh, otherwise known as the Affordable Care Act. And um, there was some testimony on Capitol Hill recently. I just got it in my uh, YouTube inbox today. It's on oversight and reform. It's a YouTube channel. Examining the impact of Obamacare on doctors and patients. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll give you, like, in brief what this doctor is about to say. He says something like, Obamacare destroys the doctor-patient relationship. Then he goes on to cite some specifics, saying, like, uh, I don't know, preventive care is just mixed. That uh, there's, uh, I don't know, like, for examination, unless there's a specific complaint from the patient, then uh, the doctors under Obamacare are only allowed to listen to the heart, you know, with like a stethoscope. They listen to the heart. They take the, the heart rate. There's one other thing that they're allowed to do, and then that's it. And unless there's a specific complaint from the patient. Now, if there is a specific complaint, this doctor, as he says, uh, anemia, he says, that uh, there's not a... Uh, that uh, it's disallowed to do certain tests that would make sense to... Uh, to diagnose the the anemia you know, or you know whatever it is the um, the preventive care protocol has been destroyed that doctors they're not allowed under Obamacare to provide the appropriate preventive care to prevent their patients from uh, having like even worse severe health problems, that they, they're going to suffer health problems because they didn't receive certain preventive care, certain tests, certain, uh, I don't know, certain medications or, you know, uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever it is that's necessary. The uh, preventive care protocol that the government is drawing up prevents the doctors from being able to uh, uh, provide their patients care because the insurance companies are no longer required to pay for it. So, like, if these doctors do this extra care, then they're going to have to charge the patient directly for it. You know, if the patient is smart to the whole game and knows that they need to request more care, then yeah, they, they're going to wind up having to pay for it themselves because the insurance companies are no longer required to pay for it because of Obamacare. Because of Obamacare's... The Affordable Care Act's uh, disintegration of preventative medicine. I'll let you listen to what this doctor has to say. This guy. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to speak with you today on behalf of Docs for Patient Care and thousands of practicing physicians nationwide who share our deep concern about the effects of the Affordable Care Act upon the practice of medicine and specifically upon our relationship with patients. You have my written testimony and the attached information. In the interest of time, I will depart from the written documents. In response to the question, how does this law affect the physician-patient relationship? The answer is, it destroys it. This has been developing for many years, but this law truly makes it crystal clear. In fact, Dr. Donald Berwick, the former head of CMS, has written that for this law to work, the traditional physician-patient dyad must end. All of you on this committee see your doctor from time to time. What do you expect from the visit? You'd like a friendly, compassionate doctor who will listen to you, examine you, and talk to you. The doctor will call on extensive training and experience to devise a plan that you both agree upon and understand. 
Your doctor simply wants to do what their training and experience has prepared them to do. Listen to your history, do a physical exam, discuss the findings, and recommend a plan. Unfortunately, that is not how things are going in medicine. To illustrate how these things are changing, I'd like to share some stories. The electronic medical record systems have been touted as a cure for many of the problems in our healthcare systems today. Unproven and untested, these claims are simply not true. During a recent sales demonstration at my hospital, the presenter, a physician's assistant, took 30 minutes to demonstrate how to document the patient encounter in their system. The process was unfriendly to both patient and doctor. One of our primary care physicians asked, how do you propose that I do this in the 15 minutes that I have with patients? He answered, the goal is to reach at least a level three visit. I'll say that again. The goal is to reach at least a level three visit. In other words, billing trumps medical care. He added, so you have your nurse enter the history data, you fill in the physical exam, make the plan and move on to the next patient. Really? Where in these 15 minutes do you talk to the patient or listen to the patient, you, the doctor? As a patient, how do you feel? Did you develop a relationship or are you part of an assembly line? I think that most of us know the answer and it should make us both sad and angry. And then there is this account of a fellow physician's recent experience taking her father to visit his new primary care doctor. This is her story. I took my father, 80 years old and living independently, to meet his new internal medicine physician yesterday. I sent ahead a brief summary of the history, list of medications, and request that he do a physical exam, since it had been well over three years since it was done. After introducing himself, he immediately announced that federal guidelines no longer allow regular exams. An exam allows only listening to heart, lungs, and bowel sounds with the patient sitting. It does nothing else unless there's a specific complaint to justify it. I asked if anemia, which my father has, justified a rectal exam. He said, no. He, of course, quoted repeatedly the U.S. Preventive Task Force recommendations as one of the standards. He recited the statistics and the societal cost arguments. He had it all down. A perfectly useful idiot. He said he only does ev evidence-based medicine. In fact, he had just been to a conference to confirm the validity of his positions. I did not engage him. It was not appropriate with my poor father sitting there listening to how he is too old for, well, anything. Eventually, to pacify me, the doctor went through the motions of the rectal exam. After having to leave the exam room to get gloves and lubricant, which are, of course, of no use to him. I doubt he even knows how to do a rectal exam, since my dad, who has had many of them, hardly felt it. Again, guidelines trump medical care. This is the reality of Obamacare. There is no care. This law, supported by organized medicine, has been consistently opposed by docs for patient care and AAPS. Things don't need to be way, this way, ladies and gentlemen. This doesn't have to occur. American physicians need to be free to do what they've been trained to do, excel at practicing medicine. American patients need to be free to choose the health insurance plans and medical treatments that suit their needs, not something coerced by a central authority. This is simply impossible under the suffocating burden of the Affordable Care Act. Thank you very much for your invitation to speak today, and I'll be happy to entertain questions. Thank you, Dr. Armstrong. So there you go. It's a, a doctor. You're saying what my video said the other day. That uh, Obamacare is destroying preventive medicine. Now, if you know anything about medicine, then you would know that preventive medicine is the most important medicine. That if you don't prevent stuff from getting bad, then when it's got too bad, you go to the doctor's and they just tell you it's too late. It's too late. Just go home, write your will, you, uh, you close your business with your family or whatever, and that's it. You're done. And, you know, that's, that's what the Obamacare is. Obamacare is destroy preventive medicine, make sure that everybody that is able to uh, acquire any care from the doctor 
is getting the care too late that you know, it's uh, it's when the uh, you know when it, when it has gone far enough that it's gonna be fatal in a short amount of time you know whatever it is whatever the condition is you know, whatever cancer or you know um, heart condition or whatever you know, it, it doesn't have to be like that there's absolutely nothing that yeah, if you're a live and breathe in person, there's nothing that has to be fatal. You know, like even uh, you know, aggressive, you know, long, long spawned cancer that you know uh, it can all be destroyed if you do the right things. You know, you gotta alkalize, you gotta you know, adjust your diet, you gotta clean your food, you gotta clean your water, or you gotta make sure you you're consuming clean clean food. You know, you gotta uh, you gotta clean your water. You know, um, there's there's like a bunch of different things that that you have to do in order to cure cancer. But you know, these uh, uh, allopathic medicine, you know, establishment medicine, what they're teaching these doctors in medical school, is exactly wrong to legitimately cure cancer. You know, they uh, they advocate like noxious chemicals that will make you sick and radiation you know also you know, they'll uh, they'll they'll cut you open and they'll cut the thing out of there you know whatever type of cancer it is and um, you know if you've ever seen like a wart what happens when you when you cut a wart off it gets twice the size that it was before and so you know that's that's pretty much exactly what happens when they improperly cut a cancer out of your uh, you know, out of your body, is you know they they just cause it to be even bigger than it would have been if they hadn't gone in there and cut it out. I don't know. It's, uh, you know Obamacare. It's devastating. It's devastating what it's going to do to you know, to medicine. Basically, uh, it is the government telling the insurance companies that they don't have to fund you know they don't have to provide preventative medical services you know that the the government is now in the middle of the doctor patient relationship with the wedge of the insurance companies that the uh, the government is telling the insurance companies they don't have to cover it the insurance companies are telling the doctors that they don't cover it and preventive medicine and so the doctors they're telling for the most part they're not telling the patients anything they're not telling the patients that you know I would do this because you know it seems to make sense but I can't do it because the insurance tells me that they won't pay for it you know they won't even bother to tell the, the patients that they'll just let the patient suffer whatever it is that they're gonna suffer because the doctor didn't do what the doctor should have done what would have made sense for the the situation you know uh, so you know uh, what what also did Obamacare do you know it uh, it enforces that people have either got to buy insurance from these pri private corporations that are ripping people off denying everybody preventative medical care or they can pay the government a fine for for not buying the private insurance you know, so they, they, they're taking more money that people would have had to buy stuff to save their lives from the cancer or from whatever you know that they they could have bought like water filters or they could have bought seeds and potting soil and grown their own food in their uh, you know in their window space or something like that they could have got like UV lighting to grow their own food indoors. Yeah, you know, they could have got uh, you know a greenhouse for their backyard, whatever it is. Yeah, you know, they they could have got something with that money that would have saved their lives. But instead, they're gonna have to pay the insurance companies. Which even e even with them buying the insurance, they're not gonna cover the preventative care. So they're gonna get junk health care for you know all that money that they're gonna put into their 
insurance, supposed. You know, it doesn't insure them against you know poor medical outcome. It doesn't insure their health. You know, it just gives money to a criminal organization that bought the president and bought the Congress to pass a law that allows them to, at the force of gunpoint, rip the American population off, rip off the taxpayers, and rip off the whole of society. Everybody that doesn't have medical care, you know, that uh, they're going to be forced to buy insurance from from these insurers. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and even people who were on insurance, now they're not going to be getting preventative care because the government has told the insurers they don't have to cover it. This just, it, it totally destroys health care for the whole of America. People that used to have insurance, now they don't have functional insurance. Now their doctors are not going to be doing the tests that they would have because the, the government has told them that the uh or well the government has told the insurers that they don't have to cover these tests and so doctors aren't going to be doing the tests so you know these um you know, everybody, everybody that um you know that that used to have functional health care now does not have functional health care and people are going to have to buy insurance that is not even going to be functional insurance to insure health care it's outrageous. It is just one massive poly tech ripoff.